guys, Mr. Backwork here. In lesson 2.2, part one, we're gonna be taking a look at some polynomial functions of higher degree. So two objectives we got for this video. First thing we're gonna do is identify a polynomial function based on its graph, and then we're gonna use something called the leading coefficient test to look at the end behavior of some different graphs. As far as taking a look at graphs and deciding if they represent a polynomial function or not, there's really two things that we look for. The first thing is we need to make sure that our graph is continuous, meaning that it's not gonna have any breaks in it. So if we compare these two graphs, this one would be an example of a cubic function. So this one has a nice continuous line. There's no breaks in it, or if we were sketching it out, we wouldn't have to pick up our pencil at all to draw it. As far as this one over here goes though, looks like there's a linear piece and even a quadratic piece. So if we were graphing this one out, you know, we'd draw out this first line, then we'd have to pick up our pencil and move it to draw out the other piece, meaning that there is a break in the graph, so this one would not be continuous. The other thing we look for, if our graph has any turns or curves in it, they need to be smooth and rounded. So like this one over here on the left, an example of a cubic function, it's got these smooth rounded curves or if we think about like a quadratic parabola, it's got a curve at the bottom. Compared to this absolute value graph where it comes to a point, that's not a smooth rounded curve, so that would not be a polynomial function. So if we take a look at these two graphs, we're gonna decide yes or no, do these things represent a polynomial function? So taking a look at this first one on the left, it looks like our greatest integer function or one of those step functions and I can see this graph is made up a whole bunch of different pieces. So if we were sketching this one out by hand, we would have to pick up our pencil to draw each individual piece, meaning that the graph is not continuous, so no, this one is not a polynomial function. If we look at letter B, okay, this graph, I could draw it out without having to pick up my pencil at all. There are a couple of curves in it, so we need to make sure that those are smooth, rounded curves, and I think this one fits. So yes, this one is a polynomial function. So what I want to look at now is something called a power function where we've got x raised to some power of n. And what we're going to do is we're going to start getting a general idea of what these power function graphs should look like. So I want to have you guys grab your calculators and we're going to do a little graphing as far as a few different power functions. So I'm focusing on this x squared function, x to the fourth and x to the sixth. We're going to graph those things out and hopefully we're going to notice something about the shape that they have. So here's my calculator. I already went into the y equals screen and typed in these three different functions, x squared, x to the fourth, and x to the sixth. If we graph them out, we should notice that they all have kind of the same general shape. Uh, that first one we obviously know is a parabola. The other two look sort of like parabolas. They're maybe a little bit skinnier and they're actually even flatter on bottom, but they do have kind of a parabolic look to them. Well, there's a reason that's happening, and it's all based on the powers of the functions that we were typing in. We had an x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth. All of those are even powers, and all of those even powered functions are going to have sort of this kind of general parabolic shape to them. Remember, even functions are going to have y-axis symmetry, so the right side is going to match up with the left side. So if we look at graphing out some of those other power functions, so this time we're going to look at x to the third, x to the fifth, and x to the seventh. So again, here's my calculator. I've already got those typed in. We should know that that x to the third power, that x cubed, gives us that black disco graph we've been calling it. Our other functions are going to kind of match up, just like our even-powered functions all kind of matched up. These are all odd-powered functions, so they're going to have origin symmetry. So what's going on in the top right up here is going to match up with what's going on in the bottom left. So as far as those powers go, if we're dealing with f of x equals x to the nth power, if n is an even number, so if we're dealing with even-powered functions, the graph is going to look something like this y equals x squared, that parabola graph. On the other hand, if n is an odd power, it's gonna look sort of like a cubic function. Now, one thing to note, the greater the value of n, the flatter our graph is gonna be close to the origin. So we could see that with some of those parabolic graphs and some of those sort of cubic graphs, uh, the, the higher the power got, the flatter our function was around the origin. So using what we know about those powers and some different transformation stuff that we've been doing, we should be able to do some quick sketches of these functions and then double check them with our calculator. So this one, this f of x equals x plus five raised to the fourth power. Very first thing I see is this fourth power. So I know that it should look sort of like a parabola graph. If we look on the inside, there's a plus five. So we should be able to recognize that as a horizontal shift left five units. So if we wanted to do a quick sketch and check it out, 
it should look something like this. Sort of parabolic graph, a little bit flatter on the bottom, but shifted left five units. Similarly with this one, I see a fifth power, so it's going to look sort of like one of those cubic graphs, but again, a little bit flatter around the origin. This minus three inside of parentheses is going to shift us to the right three spaces, and our one-fourth is going to vertically shrink our graph, so it's going to be a little shorter and a little wider. So it should look something like that. So we're going to talk about this thing called the leading coefficient test, which helps us describe end behavior of our graphs. So what's happening on the left-hand side and what's happening on the right-hand side of our graph. And the first thing we're going to look at is if n is an odd power. So the two things that could happen, that leading coefficient could be a positive number, which would mean that our graph would fall as we move to the left, it would go down, and it would also go up as we move to the right. On the opposite end of things, if that leading coefficient is a negative number, well, that's like having an x-axis reflection. So now our graph is going to rise as we go to the left, and it's going to fall as we go to the right. If we look at n being an even power, again, the leading coefficient test tells us what's happening on the left and right-hand side of our graph. So if the leading coefficient is positive, our graph is going to rise both as we move to the left and the right. So it's got that parabolic shape to it. If that leading coefficient is negative, again, that's like an x-axis reflection, so it flips the graph down. So now our graph is going to fall as it goes to the left and to the right. So we're going to look at some different functions, and we're going to see if we can figure out the left and right-hand behavior of our graph using that leading coefficient test. Now, when we use the leading coefficient test, we need to make sure that our functions are written in power descending order, so going from the very, very highest power down to the lowest power. Okay, our leading coefficient is that number on the highest powered x. So if we look at number one, okay, this, is, this thing is written already in power descending order. We go from a fourth power to a first power. Since this is a fourth power, we know that it should have kind of a parabolic look to it. So the left behavior should be the same as the right behavior. Leading coefficient is a positive number. So our graph is going to go up as we move to the left and also up as we move to the right. Taking a look at the next one down, I see an odd power. So this is going to have sort of a disco graph look to it. Uh, leading coefficient is negative, so that means our graph is going to go up as we move to the left and down as we move to the right. Taking a look at number three, we've got negative 9x squared plus 7x minus 8. So again, quadratic or second powered function, so it's going to have a parabolic shape to it. But it's negative, so now our graph is going to fall to the left and also fall as we move to the right. Very last one, I see a cubic graph, so again, disco graph type shape, positive leading coefficient, so it's going to fall to the left and rise to the right. That's it as far as this video goes. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you fill out the Google form linked in the description down below.